Okay, Duke is on the way. Just a couple of announcements before they get here. A uh, reminder as a courtesy to your fellow media members and also to the participants in this press conference. Please silence your cell phones, either put them on vibrate or turn them off entirely. Recording of these press conferences on cell phones, cameras, anything like that is strictly prohibited. We do have a Zoom call for those not in the room. If you have a question, if we have time, we will just raise your hand. We will try to get to you if we run out of time with questions here in the room. We have microphones on each end. Just raise your hand when we get to the question and answer portion. We'll get a microphone to you. Please give your name and affiliation before asking your question. We'll obviously try to keep things moving. Both locker rooms will be open. The Duke locker room is open at this time. So if, you can't, if we can't get to your question here, you can still get them at their locker room. Okay, we have Duke up on the podium. Duke advancing to the Sweet 16. We have head coach John Shire. We have freshman guard Jared McCain. We have sophomore forward Kyle Filipowski. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, then we'll go to questions for the student athletes, dismiss them in about five minutes, and take questions for coach. But Coach Shire, if you want to start. Yeah, just really proud of these guys and proud of our team. Um, James Madison, you know, you're playing a team that has three losses the whole year. And they had a really impressive performance against Wisconsin. And I don't know if we expected this, but I just thought our guys came out with such a great competitiveness. And they were obviously ready to play, ready, not just ready to play, you have to be ready to compete in these games. And everybody that was on the floor, I felt had that. Uh, it helps, you know, when you have a guy like Jared McCain, you know, he broke the Duke record today for threes in the NCAA tournament. We've had some pretty good shooters here. And uh, so to sort of break that record with eight, uh, I'm sure he's mad at me for taking him out early. <laughs> he's he's going to be mad at me. He wanted to be in there more, but he had uh, just he had a great way about him, obviously. And flip, just the attention that he gets in his passing. I thought it was one of the best passing games we've had. You know, 22 assists and six turnovers. They're top 20 in the country with turning you over. And uh, obviously, we're going to enjoy this one, celebrate it today, and find out quickly who we're playing. And can't, can't wait to go to Dallas. We're going to start on this side of the room. Questions for the student athletes. We'll start in the back row, and then we'll go up one row. Yep. All right, we'll go row four on the aisle. Hey, Jared, Adam Zagoria, NJ.com. At, at what point did you know you were just feeling it today? And uh, were you upset that he didn't let you <laughs> try to break the record of nine? Oh, I feel like every game I'm, I'm always ready to see if I'm going to go off. Um, I, I work so hard, so I'm just prepared every game. Um, I do blame him a little bit for sure. He definitely um, just wants to keep that record. Um, yeah, I wanted to beat him, so. It's not mine. He's talking about the points record. You know, that's what he's I, talking about. I just about. want to be him, really. That's, yeah. all, that's really all my goal is in life is to be him. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's really it. <laughs> we'll stay on that same side in the back row. Jared, when you hit that 6-3, was that the uh, MJ shrug you did? I don't know what I did out there, to be honest with you. I, I think so. I'm pretty sure that's what I hit. Um, yeah, I don't know what I was doing. I, really, I wasn't really conscious out there, though. So. What, what was it like to, you know, the, a first half there, you hit your first six threes, NCAA tournament game. And, I mean, can you just describe what it felt like? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the best feeling in the world when you know the work you put in is um, showing up on the court, especially in such a big game like this, to go to the Sweet 16. Uh, for these types of games, you just want to win, and I want to do everything I can to win. And tonight, if that was making shots, making threes, and then that's what it was. So I'm just grateful to even have this opportunity to go to the Sweet 16. We're going to stay on that side in row one, then we'll come over to this side. Go ahead, row one. Uh, Jackson Hefner from the Breeze, JMU student newspaper. <coughs> um, I'll keep it short. After last year, how much do you guys want to make the Sweet 16? Start with Kyle, then go Jared. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously Jared wasn't here last year to be uh, to experience what, what we went through. But um, you know, none of us forgot about what happened with Tennessee in the second round. And I think that just added a little bit more fire um, to us, to the returning guys. And, and, and we knew it was going to be a similar type of game. So we, we, uh, I think we learned our lesson playing last year. We didn't want to repeat that at all. We, you know, 
um, just learned and moved on from that, and, and I think that showed tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I was watching that game last year, so we've been talking about all year how um, in the tournament just like, people get more physical, they try to punk you, and um, we weren't going to let that happen. We weren't going to lose off that. So I obviously want to win for all these guys, especially what happened last year, so we just got to keep going. We're going to go on this side. We're going to start on the end. Row three, go ahead, and then we'll move into the second. Tom Herring with AP Radio. Kyle, can you talk about the start of the game, the first few minutes where you took control? What went into that? Yeah, I mean, just just staying poised, um, you know, knowing knowing that it's a it's a long game of runs, and um, you know, just staying staying with my guys. Uh, you know, I think just sticking to that game plan, having that trust and faith in, in one another. Um, you know, that really just gets the, the momentum flowing in our favor. And, uh, you know, it was just a great feeling tonight. Stay on row three. This is Jordan Ron from ESPN. This question is for Jared. I feel like the other night there was a couple balls that were halfway down and they kind of popped out. You were kind of just like smirking. How much did you think that this kind of game was coming, knowing that you were that close kind of the other, the other night to, for this happening as well? Yeah, I was, I was talking with my family, like, when those shots go in and out, I know um, I'm just due. I'm due for to, to make some more the other night, um, and tonight was that night. Uh, but yeah, when I see a few go in and out, I just kind of smirk at the rim because I know the rim just wants to give me back some some makes. Uh, so yeah, and that happened tonight. Or just don't hit the rim. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coach. All right. Uh, we're on the same side. We're on the aisle, row three. Hey guys, Jerry Beach from Field Level Media. Uh, James Madison got off to a really fast start there tonight. They were really confident coming in. Uh, how essential was it for you guys to have that kind of first few minutes so that they didn't get a chance to build on Friday night's momentum? Yeah, I mean, just uh, just just watching the game against Wisconsin with them. You know, they, they they had 14 of their first you know 17 points and off of turnovers and in transition. So just um, not letting them get in the flow uh, early on in the game. Um, just you know, we, we won that game, you know, a lot with our defense. And I, I know we had guys that were on fire tonight, too. But, um, you know, that just came that just came with our defense. So it was great. We'll, uh, we'll do last two for the student athletes starting on this side in the back row. Uh, just a, a quick one for Jared. So when you hit your first three, you I don't know if you're smirking at the rim or the JMU student or family section. Was that smile towards the section? Yeah, it was mostly towards that. The, okay. The section. And if I can just uh, follow up with one more, it's um, when you hit shots early like that, and maybe Kyle, you can address this. Does it take away some of their physicality? Does it make you easy? Does it ease up some of their physicality or make you more comfortable with it? Yeah, I mean, as a shooter, when you hit hit some early, they obviously want to press up on you. Um, so it definitely makes the game wide open uh, for drives, for kicks. Uh, but yeah, so to see if you go in early, I knew they were going to press up on me, so I know how to get by them and make some kicks. Kyle, anything to add? No, I mean, Jared, Jared said most of it. And, um, you know, I think, I think just with, just with um, you know, my passes in the beginning of the game, you know, the first one to Jared, that, uh, that really got him to start with, with those eight threes. Um, so, yeah. All credit's a flip, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Last question for student athletes down here in row one. Hey, Jared, Ryan Morick here with Fox News. When you're that hot, is it hard to kind of contain yourself and just not shoot from wherever you want? <laughs> uh, definitely. Um, I definitely have to listen to coach here sometimes. Uh, but when you get that high, you want to just, you know, pull it from half, do whatever you can. Uh, but I know in these types of games, obviously, it's a game of runs. They can obviously come back, so you just got to make the smart play. But you definitely want to shoot it from anywhere. Jared, Kyle, congratulations. Exactly. We'll see you at the Sweet 16. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Duke locker room is still open, so you can get these guys at the locker room. We'll take questions for Coach Shire at this time. We'll start here in row two on this side of the room. Coach, I saw Roche, you know, get his hand and look like he was writhing in pain. Blake's obviously went down really hard. It went completely silent. Any update on both of them and the health of your team going into the Sweet 16? No. Uh not yet. We have to get an x-ray for Jeremy. Uh, I mean, clearly it looked like he dislocated his pinky there. Uh, and then Jalen, you know, it's a scary play. I, I don't think there was any bad intention at all. Just uh, it's a scary play. So obviously we got to get him examined and checked out, but uh, I don't know his status yet. We'll stay on that same side in row four on the aisle. Hey, John, this is a little bit of a deeper question, but there's been a lot of talk about freshmen struggling in the tournament. Kentucky went out early. Seth Greenberg saying only older teams, you know, advance. How do you kind of balance 
freshmen? What's the right balance for freshmen with older guys? Obviously, you have some really talented freshmen this year, and you're going to have a whole bunch next year. You know, how do you kind of get the right balance with the older guys and the freshmen? Well, it's uh, it's it's an art form. You know, I don't think it's an exact science, right? And when you recruit, especially in today's day and age, there's so much uncertainty, especially for us at least, when you have uh, multiple players that have a chance to hopefully go pro at some point. So, you know, everybody has their own journey. But, you know, look, for me, it's should I have not recruited Jared McCain because he'd be a freshman? You know, I just, <laughs> end of the day, you, you – you go after the guys you believe in. And, you know, look, we've been a part of, since I've been on staff with Coach K these last two years uh, that I've been head coach, you know, we've had, we've won a national championship with a freshman heavy group. Uh, we've gone to two elite eights where you're right there. Uh, this group, it certainly helps to have a Jimmy Roach. You know, the 15 team at Quinn Cook. Like, th there has to be some balance, of course. Uh, but you can't sit back and say, this is exactly what you need because, when you have a chance to bring in the freshman that we did this year or the freshman for next year, uh, we're going to do that every day of the week. I think anybody would if they could or they try to, uh, but you still need experience in returning players. So for me, it's you try to find that balance, but uh, that's the nature of being in college basketball in 2024. Yeah, there's no question you feel it, right? I mean, the average age, I mean, is certainly gone up. Next year will be the same way. I think a year from now it will go down a little bit where uh, things can maybe even out just from an age perspective. Uh, but you feel it now more. You, you, you definitely do versus a few years ago or um, hopefully in two or three years from now as well. But absolutely, you do feel it. Stay on that same side also in row four, a little further in. Coach, Adam Weinberg with Minute Media. Between Houston and Texas A&M, is there a matchup that you prefer and no. is there a matchup that you sense that your team prefers? You get what you get. <laughs> you get what you get. We'll, we'll be ready, whoever it is. Two really good teams. I, I can't tell you. Yeah. We'll come to this side of the room, row four. Nicole? Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic. John, you have mentioned uh, a couple days ago when you're at Duke and you lose two games, it can feel like the world is ending. How did you guys get from that a week ago to the performances here in Brooklyn? You know, our guys talk about all the time, they talk about having humility. And, uh, you know, this game can humble you. I don't care if you're a coach, if you're a player. And, uh, you know, our last regular season game, the ACC tournament game, uh, you, had to, you have to have great humility to understand what you have to do better. And clearly all of us had to do something better. And, uh, you know, there's no – replicating the work you need to put in. And the, the, the silver lining in that was it gave us a week to work on ourselves, to look in the mirror, uh, to not listen to what people may think or we're done. or I don't know what was said because I, I truly don't pay attention. Uh, and I'm proud of our team for just sticking to the work. And, uh, and one thing that our guys always say, to, humility, but also uh, – just having gratitude. Like you, you have to be grateful for the bad moments that come your way too. And if you handle them the right way, it can put you in a position where you're even more ready. And I thought that that's what it did in the Vermont game and then uh, tonight against James Madison. We'll do one final question for Coach on the other side of the aisle, row five. Roger Rubin from Newsday. Uh, it's a little bit like Nicole's question. You have this extra time after, I mean, the backdrop is obviously losing the conference tournament game, but you have this extra time. What did you do with the extra time that got your team looking like this <coughs> coming in? Well, I think it started with a lot of uh, individual conversations, uh, honest team conversations, because, you know, obviously there's the work you need to put in on the court. That work doesn't matter if you don't know where your players' heads are at, what they're feeling, what they see, what they're getting. And so there was a lot of talks started there. And then for us, you know, our defense was actually pretty good, but our offense hurt our defense, you know, that, in both games that we lost. And so, <coughs> excuse me. And so for us, we just spent more time working on what's the next, we just kept saying, what's the next action? Team takes away the first thing, what are we going to next? And, uh, <coughs> you know, you're not going to score 93 points every game. But I do think our offense was 
a lot better in these two games. And then just getting back to how you need each other. You know, you just, you need each other in this. I thought we had great connectivity and um, great practice habits. I know that's the last question, but shout out to our women's team. You know, we're, we're, we're both in the Sweet 16. Uh, I'm watching the game getting ready today. And, you know, Reagan Richardson, uh, oh my God, she was, <laughs> she was incredible today. So seeing our team go to Sweet 16, to share this with them, Hopefully we can uh, both keep advancing, but I uh, just want to give them a shout out and uh, we'll see the ladies back in Durham. All right, thank you. Thanks coach, Thanks. we'll see you in the Sweet 16. Right. Thank you. Okay, we have James Madison on the podium. We have head coach Mark Byington, senior forward Julian Wooden, junior guard Terrence Edwards Jr. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, then we'll go to questions for the student athletes, do about five minutes of that, then we'll dismiss them and go to questions for coach. James Madison locker room also is open at this time. Coach, if you want to start with an opening statement? Yeah, it was an extremely difficult night for us. And, um, you know, multiple reasons. Um, you know, when things come to an end, it, it, it's, it's, never, it's never a good feeling. Um, you know, these guys put so much into it. Um, it was an absolute pleasure and honor to coach them um, the entire season. Uh, just such a great, great group of guys. And they love each other. I love them. Um, I'll do whatever I can for them the rest of my life. And we ran into a Duke team I thought was very sharp. I mean, they, they came out and, um, you know, they put us on our heels and our mistakes compounded tonight. And it, was, it wasn't just one area. Um, sometimes we have bad areas, but it was too many things in one night to try to beat a good Duke team. And it was turnovers, free throws, um, not um, a rebounds. It was, it was a lot of things that we've been great at throughout the year and we weren't tonight. So um, there were two things with that, give Duke credit, and then uh, we weren't at our best, but um, it's not going to be something we're looking back on this team thinking anything less than that, that they made history this year. They are a tremendous basketball team. They left a legacy at JMU forever, and um, it's, it's tough it ends this way, but a lot of times when you make a run like this, it's going to end for, some, for certain teams, and, and it happened for us tonight. Again. Uh, questions for the student athletes, just raise your hand. We will get a microphone to you. Just give your name and affiliation before asking your question. Do we have any questions for Julian or Terrence? We'll start in the back on this side in front of me, last row. For either of the players, you guys did such a great job the other night being very physical and it seemed to fluster Wisconsin. I know you're trying to play that game all the time. When they hit those early shots, does it take back some of your physicality? Does it make you a little less aggressive on the defensive end at all? Let's start with Julian, and then we'll go to Terrence on that one. Uh, yeah, it just kind of gave him life. Uh, you can kind of tell that uh, it put us on our heels, like Coach said, and uh, it was just kind of put us in a hole. It was kind of hard to get out of. But um, yeah, I mean, I thought this team fought. We, we never gave up, and that's what I'm real happy about. Terrence? Yeah, just Jew explained it all. Come to this side, we'll be on row one, and then we'll come on the other side. Uh, Jackson Hefner from the Breeze. Um, you know, definitely a difficult way to end the season, but just kind of talk a little bit about, you know, what it was like having that sort of support from JMU throughout the game, especially kind of towards the end when it was kind of becoming clear that. Duke was going to win, but you know you guys were still fighting, and the fans were still cheering and everything. 
Start with Terrence on this one. Um, that's, um, we appreciate that, you know. Um, we we sorry we couldn't get the win today, but it just shows that um, all the work that we put in all season for the whole JMU community to come out and watch us play in March Madness all the way in Brooklyn. So, um, you know, it didn't come out the way we wanted, but we appreciate the support, and and now everybody knows who JMU is all over the nation, and that's what we do it for. And Julian? Yeah, pretty much exactly what Terrence said. Uh, I mean, they, they were huge. Uh, they were cheering even when we were down, and uh, you can kind of tell that they were super into it and kind of kept us locked in too. So, uh, yeah, shout out to them. Uh, well, we're definitely Dukes for life. We'll stay in row one. We're on the other side here of the aisle. Go ahead. Shane Bellum from the Daily News Record, Harrisonburg. Uh, for, for Terrence, um, you guys defended the three-point line really well all season, held teams under 30%. Well, what was different about trying to guard Duke behind the arc and, and McCain in particular? What was kind of the scouting report on him going in? Um, I can kind of say, you know, when you got a big like um, – um, Filipowski, you know, he's very skilled. He's a real good passer, and he's 6'10". So um, when you're going in to try to get the ball out, it's kind of difficult um, guarding two when you're rotating like that. But, um, you know, it's, that's what just happened when you're playing um, good, good players, you know. Um, shout out to him for passing the ball well tonight. Um, yeah. We'll stay on this side, end of the row, row three. Go ahead. Tom Marion with AP Radio. Terrence, what do you walk away with at the end of the season? The disappointment of tonight or the overall accomplishments? Um, most definitely the overall accomplishments. Being the leader of the team, you can't you know, um, let this sit. You got younger guys on the team that you got to be there for. So um, we, we did make a lot of history. Um, we surprised each other, I feel like. Um, going into the year, we didn't know it was going to be like this. But um, this is the best team, the best coach Bonte, one of the best coaches I ever had in my life. Um, he stayed on me. Uh, he's very smart, and shout out to him for like just just coaching us up so well. And and we just we brung whatever he put it, he whatever he coached us, we brought it to the floor, and that's why we was able to win so many games. We'll take one more question for the student athletes if there is one. Okay, Julian, Terrence, you guys are dismissed. We appreciate you taking the time. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. Locker room is still open at James Madison. Just. So you can get them there if you do have questions for them. We'll take questions for Coach Byington. We'll start in row three on this side in front of me. Hey, Coach. Jordan Ronner from ESPN. What do you make of the way that they shot the ball, McCain in particular? I think as a team they shot 50% from three as well. Yeah, they came in different ways. And um, I thought our, our lack of rebounding got them inside, outside, um, second chance points. And then he got some in transition. And then, the, and then his team found him. Um, they made great passes to him. Um, we, we knew he's a great shooter. That wasn't a surprise. Um, it was easier to kind of figure out where he was um, when it was in a half-court action. But when they got the rebounds and kickouts, we couldn't find him. And transition, we didn't find him. And um, he, he got off to a hot start, and, and he, he put us behind. And, and then we started compounding our mistakes by how well he was playing. Any other questions for Coach? We'll come up here on row – we'll go to row three and then to row one. On the aisle, row three. Mark, uh, Jerry Beach from Field Level Media. You took this job just when the pandemic was starting. You changed leagues. You know, is, do you have time now to kind of think about the last four years have been like, or is that for down the road in, in the offseason? Yeah, it's, it's probably going to come in the next couple of days. It, it really will. Um, you know, right, right now I'm hurting. It's, you know, I didn't want it to end with this team. I, I didn't, they didn't want it. And, and when that settles in, um, I will be more reflective and understand the great things that, that these guys have done this year and then where the program has gotten from, from where we started to where it is now. Um, but right now it's, it's still too raw, um, but I will get there. We'll stay here in row one this side. Uh, kind of along the same lines about you know, where the program has gotten. You, you talk to Terrence, you talk to Julian, and both those guys are saying stuff that they heard from Matt Lewis when they were freshmen. And um, with, all, with the way rosters turn over so quickly now, um, how do you build a culture, and build on a culture like you have, and like how do you keep that going from year to year? Yeah, it's extremely difficult. Um, I, I'm fortunate to, to have coached those guys for four years. And, and, and that's not normal. Um, it's, it's a great 
pleasure into seeing them grow as, as people and players and, and then the value they have on the team of, of being around, what they can do, not just for themselves, but for everybody else, um, it can't be measured. It's extremely valuable. And it's probably not going to happen much in college sports anymore. Um, let's, let's talk basketball, probably not in basketball. But I can tell you why they stayed. Um, they, they love their teammates. They love JMU. And, um, and for them to have the season like this, to be rewarded for um, a history-making season, great playing, doing things, they deserve it. They absolutely deserve it. We'll go up here on the other side of the room, row one, and then we'll come back to you. Coach, I mean, this has been a remarkable run, especially considering the recent history of this program. Have you started to kind of think at all about where you would like to see the program kind of go in the future? You know, do you want to kind of see maybe, you know, March Madness become something that's a little bit more common for JMU or even just, you know, see the point? You've talked a lot about the difficulties of the Sun Belt being a, a single bid lead league, you know, how would you like to see sort of the league kind of evolve with the program? Yeah, it's probably hard to answer tonight. Um, but, but one thing I will say, I thought the Sun Belt prepared us. And the Sun Belt is, is a tough league. It's underrated league. Uh, I thought it really did prepare us for, for this moment, um, you know, to get here. And, and obviously, we didn't play great tonight, um, but we played really well the other night. And I, I thought it helped. And you know, when you look at our scores and you look at our streaks, and, and sometimes you devalue some of these other teams in the league. They're good, and um, they're well coached. And and uh, the Sun Belt, I would love to see multiple teams. I would I would love to see that. Um, it's very difficult in a one bid league, um, but I could tell you this: the league got us ready. Yeah, the league got us ready for this for this moment and for this tournament. And we'll stay on the other side of the aisle, row one. Jarvis Heron, WHSV in Harrisonburg. <laughs> Coach, I feel like you've been building this program for this point. So to reach the NCAA tournament the second round, is this kind of the new expectation now for JMU basketball moving forward? I mean, it's, you know, for a team to win 32 games and, and make it here, it's, if, if you say that's what our goal is, I think you're going to be unhappy or unsatisfied because it's very, very difficult to get here. And it's very difficult to do what we did. Um, but to have a championship level team that's able to compete every year, I think that's more the goal. And um, sometimes, you know, with the league, it's, it's difficult because there's one out of 14 teams going to make it here. And if it was different, then it would be different. But uh, I think the expectation that when you're a coach, you want the team to get the best they possibly can get um, and take them as far as you possibly can take them. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied to know that, that I think we did that as a group, my staff and these, these players. And we ran into a team tonight that if they play like that, they're going to keep on playing. I mean, they, they were really, really good tonight. Take one more question if there is one. Okay. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you.